this will be the last vlog of the 2022 season. So let's review three more of your pole vault videos. This is number eight. Welcome to the pole vault vlog. My name is Sean Francis, and here we talk everything, drum roll please, last week's YouTube comment is, the vertical self yeeting of oneself via violent glass fiber composite abuse. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tommy. Commercial time. The research shows that people who read this book have a higher likelihood of pole vaulting higher. Because there's pixie dust in the middle of it. Seriously, 90% of the time it works every time. So I just tried to create tools that I wish I had when I was learning and building my vault. This book is a great first tool, so head over to team-hoot.com and there's a bunch of other tools on there to help you on your pole vault journey. The Georgia pole vault camp is already two thirds full, which is insane because it's been only a week. You guys are incredible. So there are only 13 spots left, so please don't hesitate. If you've been thinking about it, get on it quick. We're going to leave the coaches camp open for a while afterwards too because more coaches was probably more better. But come on, come hang out with me. The Utah pole vault camp has been delayed until May 3rd for now. There's been some technical difficulties with the high school and, and the sign up stuff, so uh, we're trying to work that through. I will keep you posted on there over at team-hoot.com along with uh, my Instagram, pole vault Instagram, team hoot pole vault, right here. So, <laughs> yeah. All right, it seems to be that time of the year where as we get closer to state meets, conference meets, section meets, the meet, the, the season gets deeper and deeper and deeper, I'm starting to get sports psychology questions, and I knew this was gonna happen. I knew it. So I did a podcast, another podcast with Robert Andrews, sports psychologist wizard. I always tell athletes that struggle mentally, I said, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is you have a really strong mind. The bad news is you're using <laughs> it the wrong way. Let's teach you how to use it the right way. So Robert has worked with professional athletes, professional sports teams, Olympians, Olympic pole vaulters, and even Simone Biles. Yeah. He's pretty good at what he does. He also wrote this book called The Champion's Mental Edge, which is my favorite sports psychology uh, book for athletes. I, I recommend it all the time. I also opened up questions from you uh, via uh, Instagram. Uh, this is a, from, a, from a mom. She goes, how do I get my 14 year old to mentally push through disappointments such as a miss during a meet? So when vaulting, I always get this doubt that starts to enter my mind once I see the bar. How do I mentally prepare myself for when those new bar heights are up? How do you deal with missing the team atmosphere after sports, after you stop competing? Wow, that's a that's a really good question. So I will post a link to the description of this podcast. I think it will be really helpful for this audience of pole vaulters that I that we have amassed together. Or head over to owlmh, o -W -L -M -H .com, and the podcasts are over there as well. Yes, it'll be helpful. All right, the first video is from Evan Cones. He was saying, he sent me this video and he was telling me that he was struggling to fully drop his shoulders and he asked me if I could take a gander. He didn't use the word gander, that's what I use because I'm the type of person who uses the word gander. <laughs> he's, he also said that he's been stuck at 12.6 and he's been stuck there for a while. If you watch the vault, it's actually really, really pretty. I, I like it so much speed. He hits the box really well. Good job, sir. Uh, yeah, I can see where he's getting stuck just a little bit here. It just seems to stop, right? And usually when that happens, uh, if you move your hands too far forward, the feet stop, right? It's like if I wanna rock back and get my hips, if these are my hips above my shoulders, I need to rock back onto the pole while it's back a little bit. But if I have the pole here and I'm not fully, I can only get to here and I wanna get to there. So that usually happens if your hands are moving too much, too fast for your feet. What I told him, instead of thinking about throwing his hands down to his legs, which he's really good at, he's closing that gap, I want him to think about throwing his legs up to his hands. A few days later, he sent me this. I jumped a double PR today, 13.6. I focused on bringing my feet to my hands and it made, a much, and it, made it much easier to drop my shoulders and get inverted. Dude, you did it. Or check this video out. Hands are staying back. Look, pulls back, he's able to get his feet up a little higher. Oh, close the gap. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> he did it, and that was only a couple days of working on that. So I would imagine the more he does that, the more he's gonna be able to get back and... It's gonna be great. It's already great, it's gonna be even greater. Good job, man. All right, second video is of Tristan, and Tristan, Tristan's got a really cool vault too. So what he said to me was, he says, Hey man, I'm a first year vaulter and my PR is 13 feet. Any tips on vaulting higher? Uh, 
Yeah, I can't believe you're a first year pole vaulter. How are you vaulting this well as a first year pole vaulter? You're killing it, man. This, is, this might be a good way to look at that order of operations and working our way backwards because where we usually see the problem, that's not the problem. There's something earlier that's creating the problem. And this is a really good example of that. So if we look here, we wanna close the gap, right? Okay, so that looks to be the problem. So what do we do? We go backwards a little bit. What, what made it so that didn't happen? And it's hard to see, but if you watch it in fast motion, it's right there. See that pole? He was moving really well and then it just stopped kind of at the box. Boom, just stopped moving. So it's a pole drop and a plant issue. So the poles is dropping really fast, the plug's hitting the back of the box, and when that happens, it's really hard to bend the pole, right? You're pushing down into the plug and you're just hitting the back of the box. But if I was to press up into the pole, see even my pen's bending a little bit with minimal pressure. So we're not really able to plant the pole because the pole drops a little late and it's hitting the back of the box and putting pressure into the plug. So it's getting a little stabby. The easiest way that I found to think about this is think about planting and putting the energy into the bend of the pole. Into, in, into the side of the pole versus down into the plug. That's where we want to put it. Into the pole versus into the plug. Another way I like to think about this is if you have a med ball on your chest and you think about jumping and pushing the med ball up for as high and as far as you can go your arms are gonna be going this way versus going down into the box trying to spear some fish that probably aren't there. There's probably a lot of worms because I've seen a lot of worms in those pole vault boxes, but no fish, so we don't need to be stabbing it. So really just think about getting your pole tip down sooner and planting into the pole versus stabbing the pole. And that should help your swing, it should help your invert, it should help you get tighter to the pole, and it should help you get on bigger poles. So just, it's a win-win all around. Good jump, man, I hope that helps. Last but not least, we have Will, and Will asked me to take a look at his vault because he doesn't have a pole vault coach, <laughs> which is pretty wild. How are you clearing bars, sir? <laughs> I'm, I'm incredibly impressed. The plant, the plant, we're missing it just a little bit, and that's kind of throwing the rest of the vault off, and we're spinning and, and helicoptering a little bit, which looks super fun, by the way. Well, so think about hitting this pole like it was talking smack about your mom. And poles are mean, and they tend to do that sometimes. Do not let them talk smack about moms. So the idea here is by saying that, we were hoping we wanna get the plant up sooner and then jumping into the pole. Right now it looks like we have the reverse order of operations where we're jumping and then our plant's being hit. We wanna plant, then hit. Then I sent him a video of the drill series that are in this book and I have a video of it on YouTube as well. I'll put a link up in this corner. And then last but not least, I just reminded him that while you do all these things, while you do all these drills, remember to keep this top arm locked. We don't wanna pull ourselves over the bar, we wanna swing ourselves up and over the bar. So yeah, it was kind of a lot, but uh, that's what I told him. So get this, the next day he sends me this video and goes, hey man, I just PR'd by 12.6, trying exactly what you told me to do. <laughs> yeah, he hit the snot out of that pole. He does not like people talking about his mom. <laughs> But what I was hoping would happen didn't happen, unfortunately. So he, he hit it hard, but the plant was still after the takeoff. So we just want to keep flip-flopping though. So bring the same energy and speed and just work on going hit, jump. Like you can hit you can hit the pole twice for talking crap about your mom. Your turn looks so much better, man. I love it. You're landing right in the middle of the pit. Uh, your top arm restrator is just, you're killing it, man. You're killing it as a vaulter. And I guess you're killing it as a coach too. <laughs> <laughs> it looks so fun, dude. That's it, uh, team-hoot.com for some tools to help you pull vault higher. This is a good place to start. We also do have training programs and I've had a lot of feedback, good feedback from people who have done my three month training program over the summer and they just felt fast and balanced and strong once the fall comes and they're starting to get ready for indoor. And I'll be posting updates on Instagram. Guys, remember, there's more than one way to pole vault. I'll see you in the next one. Overthinking means you no longer trust your innate talent and training. And if you did trust your innate talent and training, you would just totally rely on that and then go execute the jump. When you begin to overthink, it means that you've abandoned how many years of training and how much experience and knowledge you have about pole vaulting. And now you're just trying to rely on thinking to get it done, which sabotages the bodies. I know it's kind of crazy, isn't it? it? Is, yeah, I never thought of it like that. I have noticed that this upcoming October is the 10 year anniversary of Team Hoot starting 
what this has become 10 years that's a long freaking time 